Six of Crows, Chapter 41, Matthias. Two, one. Matthias saw Nina's pupils dilate. Her lips parted, and she pushed past him, stepping down from the tank. The air around her seemed to crackle, her skin glowing as if lit within by something miraculous, as if she tapped a vein of gel directly, and now the god's power flowed through her. She went for the heart render immediately. Nina flicked her wrist, and his eyes exploded in his head. He crumpled without a sound. Be free, she said. Nina glided toward the sword soldiers. Matthias stopped, moved to protect her. As he saw, rifles raised. She lifted her hands. Stop, she said. They froze. Lay down your arms, as what they obeyed her. Sleep, she commanded. Nina swept her hands in an arc. And the soldiers toppled without protest, row after row, stalks of wheat felled by an invisible scythe. The air was eerily still. Slowly, Wyland and Adege climbed down from the tank. Jesper and the rest followed, and they stood in stunned silence, all language dissolved by what they'd witnessed, gazing out at the fold of fallen bodies. It had happened so quickly. There was no way to reach the harbor unless they walked over the soldiers. Without a word, they began to pick their way through, the hush broken only by faraway bells of the elder clock. Matthias laid his hand on Nina's arm, and she released a little sigh, letting him lead her. Beyond the quay, the docks were deserted, and the others heated toward the feral, and Matthias and Nina trailed behind him. Matthias could see Roddy clinging to the mast, draw slack with fear. Speck was waiting to unmoor the ship and the look on his face was equally terrified. Matthias, he turned. A group of Driscala stood on the quay, their uniforms soaked, their black hoods raised. They wore masks of dully gleaming gray, chain mail over their faces, their features obscured by the mesh. But Matthias recognized Jarl Brum's voice when he spoke. Traitor, Brum said from behind his mask. Betrayer of your country and your god. You will not leave this harbor alive. None of you will. His men must have gotten them out of the treasury before the explo after the explosion. Had they followed Matthias and Nina to the river beneath the ash? Had there been horses or more tanks stationed in the upper town? Nina raised her hands. For Matthias, I will give you one chance to leave us be. You cannot control us, witch, the Brum. Our hoods, our masks, every stitch of our clothing we wear is reinforced with gracious steel. Core cloth created by our specifications by Grisha fabricators under our control and designed for just this purpose. You cannot force us to your will. You cannot harm us. This game is at an end. Nina lifted a hand. Nothing happened, and Matthias knew that Brum was saying was true. Go, Matthias shouted at them. Please, you... Brum lifted his gun and fired. The bullet struck Matthias directly in the chest. The pain was sudden and terrible, and then gone. Before his eyes, he saw the bullet emerge from his chest. It hit the ground with a plink. He pulled his shirt open. There was no wound. Nina was walking past him. No, he cried. The Druskella opened fire on her. She saw her flinch as the bullet struck her body, saw red blooms of blood appear on her chest, her breasts, her bare thighs. But she did not fall. As the bullets tore through her body, she healed herself, and the shells fell harmlessly to the dock. The Driscala gaped at Nina. She laughed. You've grown too used to captive Grisha. We're quite tame in our cages. There are other means, said Brown, pulling a long whip like the one that Lars had used from his belt. Your power cannot touch us, which, and our cause is true. I can't touch you, said Nina, raising her hands, but I could reach them just fine. Behind the Driscala, the feared soldiers Nina had put to sleep rose, their faces blank. One tore the whip from Brum's hand. The other snatched the hoods and masks from the startled Juskela's faces, rendering them vulnerable. Nina flexed her fingers and the Juskela dropped their rifles, hands going to their heads, screaming in pain. For my country, she said, for my people, for every child you put to the pyre, reap what you've sown, Jarl Brum. Matthias watched the Juskela twitch and convulse, blood trickling from the ears of their eyes as the other feared soldiers looked on impassively. Their screams were a chorus. Class, who had drunk too much with him in a valley. Gert, who'd 
trained his wolf to eat from his hand. They were monsters, he knew it, but boys as well. Boys like him, taught to hate, to fear. Nina, he said, hands still pressed over the smooth skin on his chest where a bullet would, a wound should be. Nina, please. You know they would not offer you mercy, Matthias. I know, I know. But let them live in shame instead. She hesitated. Nina, you taught me something a bit better. They could be taught, too. Nina shifted her gaze. Her eyes were ferocious, the deep green of forest, pupils, dark wells. The air around her seemed sh to shimmer with power, as if she was alight with some secret flame. They fear you as I once feared you, he said, as you once feared me. We are all someone's monster, Nina. For a long moment, she studied his face. At last, she dropped her arms, and the ranks of Jiskela crumpled to the ground, whimpering. She released the other soldiers, and they fell back into their slumber, puppets with their strings cut. Then her hand shot out once more, and Brahma shrieked. He clapped his hands to his head, blood trickling between his fingers. You live? Matthias asked. Yes, she said, as she stepped up to the shooter. You'll just be very bald. Speck shouted commands, and the Fjallin drifted into the harbor, picking up speed as the sail swelled, behind, uh, swelled with wind. No one ran to the docks to stop them. No ships or cannon fired. There was no one to give warning, no one to signal to the gunnery above. The elder clock chimed on unheeded as the schooner vanished into the vast black shelter of the sea, leaving only suffering in her wake.